This will be an updated video to the modeling a coffee mug. Um, what I've already done here is I've got notes open and here's where we can take some measurements of the coffee mug, diameter, height, handle width, handle thickness, and mug thickness. And we can put those in and that will be saved in our file so that we don't have to go back and keep measuring things or write it down on a piece of paper and lose it. So first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to change perspective viewport here to shaded so that as we start drawing things in 3D, we can tell that they're 3D instead of seeing the wireframe. So I'm going to start by drawing a circle that's the diameter of our coffee mug. And then I'm going to extrude this. So the command is extrude CRV. Hit enter. We want to make sure we extrude it upward. Um, and a couple things that we want to make sure of. Both sides should equal no. And solid, normally we have that yes, but this time we want that to be solid equals no. So I'm going to go ahead and there's my coffee mug. Okay. And we can see over here that it shows that in 3D. So that's, or in shaded. So that's why we have that as shaded. Now, next thing I need to do is I need to fill in the bottom here so that we basically have an open cylinder. So the command is going to be planar SRF, P L A N A R S R F, planar surface, enter. <clears throat> and I'm going to click on my curve down there, select that, and hit enter. And it makes that so that we now have a bottom on it. We are going to highlight those and we're going to type join so that we now have one open poly surface. Poly meaning multiple surfaces because that is a surface right now. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do an offset surface. I'm going to go ahead and maximize perspective here for a moment. We need to add some thickness to this because our coffee mug actually has some thickness. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to type offset SRF. Enter. Now I need to put in the distance or the thickness of the coffee mug. Um, I want to make sure that corner equals sharp and solid equals yes, all up in the command line. Now the other thing I need to look at is these arrows and which direction they're pointing. These are pointing outward, but I want the surface to offset inward. So if I click on it, you can see how it changes the direction of the arrows and it does the same for the bottom here. That's what we want. So once we have our distance in, corner sharp, solid yes, and the arrow is pointing inward, we can hit enter. And it adds some thickness to that. Now we don't notice that in the bottom, but there is actually some thickness there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to round over our edges here. So the command for that is going to be fillet edge, enter. For next radius, I want to put in half of the thickness of my coffee mug. So 0 0.05, whoops, put a dash in there, 0 0.05, there we go, enter. And I have to select the edges. I'm going to select the outside and the inside. And you'll notice, typically on this, when we extrude a circle, it makes it into two different surfaces or edges. That's perfectly normal. Don't know why it does that, but it does. So select all those, hit enter, hit enter again. And now our top edge here is rounded just like our coffee mug. Now we're going to do the same thing to the bottom edge. So fillet edge is the command. This one, you're going to have to guess what the radius is for the bottom of your coffee mug. We just want to make it come close. So we'll rotate that, click on this edge. Oh, hit enter, sorry. Click on the edge, click on this edge, enter, enter. And if that looks good, we can go ahead and leave that. We can, if it bothers us, get rid of that curve down there. So we have basically a can right here. Okay, rounded top, rounded bottom. If you don't like the fillet edge here, control Z and change the radius. So I'm going to go back to right viewport now. And I'm going to change this to shaded for a moment. And I'm going to use, so there's a picture that we can download um, to use for this next part, which is drawing the 
handle of the mud. So I'm going to use the picture command. I'm going to find the picture. And I'm going to put it in here. Okay. We can see how it doesn't quite line up at the moment. We got it close. I'm going to go ahead and scale it just a bit. There we go. I like that. Okay. Now to make this easier to see, I'm going to draw the handle on the white layer so that I can actually see it against the black here. And I'm going to use one of my curve tools. I just want to draw about the center line of our handle here. Okay, about like that. Once I have that drawn, I can either hide or delete that picture because I'm not going to need it again. Now, if there's something I don't like about this, I can always adjust some of the points a little bit, um, but really not that big of a deal. I'm going to move this back to the block layer, change object layer. There we go. And now, oh, see, in my right viewport, I'm going to draw a rectangle. Let's make sure my black layer is active. That's about the size of the handle. I took the width and I took the thickness dimensions earlier. And I want to round the edges over. So that's going to be fillet. We'll try some different radius. Yeah, that looks good. To basically make it rounded. Okay. And then I need to get this centered on the end of this line right here. So let's rotate this. I'm actually going to hide this momentarily. Okay, and you can see that's way off, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line right here. I'm going to highlight both of those. Do move. And then I want to get that line to snap to the center of that. Whoops, it didn't quite, whoops. Didn't quite move it where I wanted it to. This is where having multiple viewpoints comes in handy. I'm going to go there to the intersection. Now we have that centered. I can get rid of that guideline. Okay, and we can go back here. Um, because this was partially hidden by the mug, we'll go ahead and leave the mug hidden momentarily. Our command now is going to be sweep one, hit enter. It says select rail. That's going to be the handle curve that we drew. Select sweep shapes is going to be this rounded rectangle that we drew. And we're going to hit enter. Um, we should be able to just hit enter again. And then we can hit OK on this pop-up menu. And there's our handle. I'm going to type show to bring the mug back up. And so there's our coffee mug with the handle. Now what we'll probably notice right down here, we've got this opening or this gap, which looks kind of funny. We're going to cheat just a little bit. We're going to take and we're going to drag this, use gumball, just until we get that hidden inside there. Okay. But now when I look inside, I'm probably going to notice that I have some sections right here that are a little funky. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this handle. So I'm going to select it, type split, enter for select cutting objects. It's going to be our mug, hit enter. Okay, and now this section in here I can delete. We notice there's a circle because there's another section inside the mug. I can delete that. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here. There we go. So now the handle is flush with the outside. If we'd like, we can get rid of that curve. And just that curve there, totally up to you whether you leave those or get rid of them or not. Now we have a mug with a handle. So we're going to go ahead and click on this and select our handle. Command is going to be Boolean Union, B-O-O-L-E-A-N 
union, hit enter. And now our coffee mug is all one continuous three-dimensional piece. So we're going to take a screenshot of that, and that's what we're going to turn in for the first step of modeling our coffee mug.